What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. Today, we have a huge haul of omnibus and trade paperbacks. Before we jump into these and start doing an overview, check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com. They sell these types of books up to 50% off cover price, immaculate packaging, super fast shipping, and great customer service. They also have a bargain bin where you can get titles up to 90% off cover price. If you mention this channel and the memo at checkout, your next order will have free shipping if you're in the United States. That's CheapGraphicNovels.com. We are on phase three of our 100K giveaway. We're going to be giving away three prizes once we hit 97,500 subscribers. The first place is going to win this X-Men 4 CGC 9.8, the first appearance of Omega Red. Second place is going to get this huge oversized Marvel's hardcover with incredible artwork by Alex Ross. And third place is going to win this set of the boys soft cover omnibus, which wasn't claimed from one of our earlier giveaways. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and stay tuned to the end of the video for more details on how to enter. All right, we have a massive amount of trade paperbacks. I'm not going to go over them all individually like I normally do with the hardcovers because that would just take too much time. And as always, these are not reviews of the actual stories. These are more of an overview of the book, what it collects, how much it costs, what's the build and construction like. Uh, so with that being said, let's jump into it. Uh, first of all, Marvel Comics sent us a slew of trade paperbacks that are coming out soon. Let's go over the ones that come out November 11th. Actually, it's just X-Men Volume 2. So this is the Dawn of X uh, title. This trade paperback collects X-Men 7 through 11. It has a $16 cover price. I kind of like uh, how they do these all one solid color on the back that goes over to the front. So that's X-Men. Then we have Wolverine Volume 1. This comes out November 18th. I got little sticky tabs on the back. Uh, and this collects the first five issues of Benjamin Percy's uh, ongoing Wolverine title. This one is sick, man, all red. So this is a $17.99 trade paperback. Story's just kind of getting started and it kind of got caught up with uh, Ten of Swords. I don't think it's really found its way yet, but nevertheless, that's coming out. Also on November 18th, we have Hellions Volume 1. Uh, this is a pretty cool series so far. This collects the first four issues. Uh, it's a $15.99 cover price, and it's basically the rejects of the Mutantdom, right? So you have like Havoc and Mr. Sinister, uh, Orphan Maker and Nanny, Wild Child, things like that. So November 18th, that's available. Then we have uh, also on November 18th, Cable Volume 1 collects the first four issues of Cable. This is by Jerry Dugan and Phil Noto. Pretty cool so far. I mean, nothing groundbreaking, but if you're uh, wanting to get into the Dawn of X titles and you miss the singles, that would be the way. Also coming out November, uh, November 18th, we have Empire, what, Lords of the Empire trade paperback. This one I'm not too familiar with. I know it has the, um, the Chip Zdarsky one-shot. So Lords of the Empire, Emperor Hulkling, Celestial Messiah, and Swordsman. Also has Empire Savage Avengers, so $17.99 cover price uh, if you're looking to pick up some Empire trades. All right, now on November 25th, we have another Dawn of X title, Excalibur Volume 2. $17.99 cover price, collects issues 7 through 12 of Teeny Howard's uh, Excalibur. This is the Jubilee, Rogue, Gambit, Apocalypse. Um, kind of really starts setting up the Ten of Swords event. Also on November 25th, we have Star Wars Bounty Hunters. This is Galaxy's Deadliest. It collects the first five issues of this series uh, with a $17.99 cover price. I haven't read Bounty Hunters. I'm just reading Star Wars and Darth Vader. So that's coming out. And then last from Marvel that, that releases on November 25th is this Conan Battle for the Serpent Crown. Uh, this is a $15.99 book that collects this five-issue series. All right, now we have this other big stack of trade paperbacks. This is from Boom Studios, so huge shout-out to Boom. I was talking with them, and I was telling them that I would really like to get caught up on some series uh, that I missed uh, in single issues. And with Power Rangers, I typically read them through the hardcover, so I'm like, man, I'm not really caught up on what's going on now. So, you know, they sent me this huge care package of all these titles. Now, something uh, is killing the children. This was sent separately. I am reading this uh, via single issues. So, super cool uh, for them to throw out this trade for us. Uh, this collects the first five issues of James Tiny and the Force. Uh, something is killing the children. $14.99 book. We'll probably use this for a giveaway or something. Excellent way to jump into the series. You know, everyone's talking about it. 
Uh, and then here's Red Mother. So this was one that I've heard good things about the singles. Uh, so they sent Red Mother Volume 1. This collects the first four issues. And it has a cover price of $14.99. Once in Future is another one. Kind of heard good things about the singles. Threw us the trade. Volume 1, The King is Undead. Kyrian Gillen is the uh, writer here. $16.99 cover price. And this collects the first six issues. Uh, they sent Brian Azzarello's Faithless. I read issue one of this. It didn't really hook me. I thought it was like maybe the second volume too. But this is the first trade paperback for this new ongoing. And it has a $17.99 cover price. This collects uh, the first six issues of Faithless. Then we jump into the Power Rangers. So they sent this Shattered Grid trade paperback. Uh, pretty cool. I have read this because I have the Deluxe Edition. Uh, this is a $30 book which collects... Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 25 through 30, uh, Free Comic Book Day 2018, and Shattered Grid Issue 1. So that's Shattered Grid. Uh, here's another one. This is Volumes 8, 9, 10, and 11 of Mighty Morphin. And it looks like it collects... And some of these boom books don't tell you what it collects on the back. You gotta go into the front. So this collects what? Mighty Morphin 25 and 30... And Shattered Grid number one. So I guess that kind of double dips a little bit. And then it ends with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 40 through 43. Uh, and then also they sent uh, Go Go Power Rangers. What is this? Volumes four through seven. Because I guess they, you know, they tie up, they cross over. So also $17.99. Uh, Go Go is the other ongoing title. So a lot to get caught up with. All right, now moving into the books that I will be doing overviews for. This is Fables, the Compendium, Volume 1 by, uh, by Will Wingham. So Fables is one of those books that was heavily um, praised in the collector's edition community. They have like oversized hardcovers. I think there's like 12 or 14 of them with a couple of volumes that are really scarce. They're really expensive, hard to even find. So I've always kind of wanted to pick up the run because of its scarcity, because they're so elusive, and because I heard really good things about Fables. So when the compendium was announced, I figured, hey man, I'll just cop the compendium and I'll read it this way, and then you know maybe it'll be collected in another edition some other way. So this has a $60 cover price, and it collects issues one through 41 of Fables, collects Fables, The Last Castle, A Wolf in the Fold, and Fables 1001, Knights of Snowfall. Let's go ahead and take a look at Fables. All right, so I didn't really show the binding of this book because it's soft cover, so you can't really have bad binding. I mean, the pages are just glued to the spine. So anyway, here we go, Fables, Bill Wingham. You have uh, artwork by Mark Buchanan, Steve Lealoa, Lon Medina, and James Jean. Here's the front, the spine, and the back. Looking here, that's how it starts. So from what I understand, it's like another like alternate take on, you know, fables that you, that you read growing up, kind of those stories. I, I kind of heard that it's kind of like uh, Once Upon a Time, which was that live action adaptation of like Disney stories. But uh, it's a really well received and respected run in the collected editions community, like I mentioned. So I'm uh, looking forward to giving this one a read. And uh, these soft cover compendiums are just a good way to get like a ton of issues packed into one volume. More than what an omnibus would carry. Doesn't look like it has really any uh, bonus material at the end, just a couple of advertisements. Next up, we have the Blade of the Immortal Deluxe Edition Volume 1. This is by Dark Horse. As you can see, it kind of looks like how the Berserk and Helsing Deluxe Editions look. Got like this faux leather vibe to it. This has a $50 cover price. It collects the first three volumes. I'm uh, reading this now. I finished the first volume. I'm digging it so far. I definitely plan to drop a review on this when I'm done reading it. But for now, let's do a little overview. So if we open the book up, you can see that it has a good binding to it. Ribbon lifts up, pages can lay nice and flat. You don't miss anything in the middle. It has a ribbon for a bookmark. The only kind of controversial thing about this is that it reads left to right instead of right to left. And the reason being is because when it was first adapted into uh, an American comic, the, uh, the artist 
Hirokai Samura, am I saying that right? The artist and the writer, he helped convert it. So they didn't mirror the panels. He actually changed the artwork for American readers. So that's why this deluxe edition is also in that way. It's not right to the left like it was originally released. But uh, anyway, now that we've taken a look at the binding, let's look at the artwork. I'm loving the construction of these Dark Horse Deluxe Editions. They're really responsible for getting me into a lot of manga. They're responsible for getting me into Berserk. So here's the front. Now I'm still trying to remember these guys' names. I wanna say it's Magi, is that right? Anyway, volume one, Deluxe Edition. Here's the spine, here's the back. Same size as Berserk and Helsing. This is the only one out of all those which reads from left to right. They talk about the swastika on his back and how that it's not like a Nazi representation because this symbol was uh, around long before the Nazis uh, adopted it. And I think about the directions of the feet is different as well. But that has to do with his name too. I think, it's, I think it is Magi. Manji, that's what it is, yeah. So Manji is an immortal, just to give like a little quick overview. And um, he's kind of done some bad things in the past and he has to repent by killing a thousand criminals. So that's kind of his backstory. And then you have this, this young uh, female character, I don't remember her name, but she basically hires him as her bodyguard or her Yojimbo, right? So um, all black and white, it's kind of like what you would expect from a Dark Horse uh, deluxe edition manga. I really dig the black and white though because I feel like it really allows for the detail and the line work to stand out. It definitely has supernatural vibes. It, it kind of has berserk vibes, honestly. So, uh, blood worms and like healing and stuff like that. So, I'm definitely digging it so far. I, I will do a full review once I'm finished. All right, the first omnibus here is the Ven Omnibus Volume 3. You know, I had to go with the Sam Keith cover. I love how this cover looks. And so cool that we are keeping up with these Ven Omnibus. This one is kind of weird. It collects a couple of Venom appearances from the Amazing Spider-Man, from Spectacular Spider-Man. And then it basically collects the entire run by Daniel Way. It also has the four issue series by Clayton Crane, Venom vs. Carnage, which I think introduces Toxin, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and we'll take a look at the back to see all of the issues it collects. This has a $125 cover price. My dust jacket did kind of come a little damaged, but what are you going to do? Here we have a nice wraparound cover. We'll take a look at that overhead. But as far as the binding, so the binding, it's kind of one of those Marvel Omnis that the pages all sound stuck together. I think I kind of got rid of a lot of that when I was stretching the spine out. So the ribbon doesn't really lift up that much, but because the pages are kind of flimsy, it's not too stiff and it doesn't have gutter loss. Even when you get towards the end of the book, it still pretty much lays down flat. So there is a little bit of give there. It doesn't really create an eye, but it does lift up a little bit so that you can uh, read all the pages. Let's take a look at the interior of the Ven Omnibus. All right, so I believe this Sam Keith cover is actually the regular cover, and the DM version was this uh, Tongue Venom, which I usually get the direct market version, but this time I was like, man, I gotta go Sam Keith. So as you can see, it collects here some Spider-Man issues, some Nova issues, then Spectacular Spider-Man, then that whole, I think it's 18 issues, uh, Daniel Way run. Like I said, uh, Venom vs. Carnage and some more. Here are all the issues it collects for a $125 cover price. Here's all the creators. You got Paul Jenkins, great dude. Um, Howard Mackey, Mark Miller, Pete Milligan, Daniel Way, Clayton Crane, and more. Got the wraparound cover. This artist gives me like Humberto Ramos vibes. But a uh, huge Venom with Wolverine here. I'm pretty sure I have the Daniel Way run in a complete collection or a trade paperback. All right, here we go. Peter Parker, Spider-Man number nine. Just jumps right into it. All of these Venom on the bus are like compilations because when Venom came out, you know, he came out, he debuted in Amazing Spider-Man. Then he got his own run after a slew of appearances and stuff like, what, what was it? Um, Wildcats with Silver Sable? 
And then uh, he got Lethal Protector, License to Kill, all these kind of like little mini series. I believe this Daniel Way run was his first ongoing, which lasted 18 issues. I want to say the following, or the, or here goes, uh, oh, they reversed it. Uh, I want to say his next ongoing was Rick Remender's run with Flash Thompson. But there might be something in between that I'm forgetting right now. Nice to have the Daniel Way run, though, in oversized format. Same with Clayton Crane. I remember getting this trade paperback when I was first getting back into comics. He did all the interiors, and now you only really see him doing covers. Here goes Toxin. But yeah, Clayton Crane did the full four-issue miniseries. Let's see if we have any extras in the back. Yeah, it looks like we have some. Oh, it is Humberto Ramos. See? <laughs> Oh, uh, look at this wizard cover. That's dope, man. Yeah, see? All right, by Humberto Ramos. But I feel like I didn't see his name listed as, as the creators everywhere, man. All right. Okay, moving over to DC. We have Lucifer, Volume 2, Omnibus. This big, huge book collects issues 36 through 75 with a $125 cover price. So I started reading volume one and it didn't really hook me right away, man. So I kind of put it away and started reading something else, but I'll need to jump back into it. I mean, I love Neil Gaiman's Sandman universe. And of course his character comes directly from there. A little bit of crackling, but it's okay. This one has a little bit of more of, a, of an eye on the ribbon for these pages. The pages are not as glossy as a Marvel omnibus, uh, a little bit more of, of a flatter look. But, um, you know, with DC, sometimes I get worried with the binding. This one seems to be pretty good, man. Look, we're towards the end of the book. You have nice give on the ribbon. You don't really have any gutter loss here. Nice sewn binding. So that looks good. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a closer look at it. All right, guys. So Lucifer, Volume 2, Mike Carey, Peter Gross, Ryan Kelly, Dean Ormston. So this is a run that I'm not too familiar with. Like I said, I tried to get into Volume 1. And it, I was started off a little slow for me, man, so I didn't really continue it. But I do plan on jumping back into it, especially after reading uh, what I've read so far of Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. It just makes me more interested in like uh, that supernatural DC Vertigo world. So here's the front. You get a table of contents here. We have a, a forward by Peter Gross. Introduction by Mike Carey. You have Virgin covers to start off with. And it gives you Neil Gaiman vibes. I mean, it's supposed to, you know, feel like it's a part of that world. I think uh, Mike Carey, I was reading his uh, full word saying he never actually got to work with Neil Gaiman. He just kind of, I don't know, grew up appreciating the Sandman run. I haven't watched the show either, Lucifer. I hear. I don't know if it's really based off of this run or not. I don't think it is. Like I said, this is one of those books that I'm not too familiar with. Let's see if we have any bonus material. The making of Lucifer. Okay, so you got like some original layouts, sketches. Oh, the cover process is pretty cool. All right, this next book is a book that you can only get from Sideshow.com. It's a book that Sideshow produces, and it's the art of Sideshow, the DC version. So this book is super cool, man. I was flipping through it, and it kind of gives all of their DC premium format and one six scale figures more background, kind of shows the whole lineup, and gives some more details about the statues. Uh, this has a $75 cover price. It's a longer book. You can see it has these nice long pages. <laughs> has really good binding too. You have a big eye on that ribbon and we'll flip through here So you guys can see kind of what I'm talking about as far as how they're highlighting their entire DC statue line Okay, so this art of sideshow is a little bit shorter than an omnibus. It's almost the same height But of course super wide pages man. Look at that. It looks awesome So I went through this thing front and back. I, I, I always you know, I, I'm very interested in like behind the scenes of statue making and kind of like, you know, seeing 
what went into it. He goes Kevin Conroy, the, the one true Batman. <laughs> uh, so it starts off with six scale figures. And it, it does these lineups. So I was really interested in that when it came to the statue part, right? So like here's like a lineup of their 2014 to 2015 line. Here's another one. It's kind of like almost like a, a visual checklist for me. Like, man, I didn't even know they had this one. Like, I didn't know they had a Green Lantern premium format. So it goes from the start of their DC line and... Um, it ends with their modern stuff, like the animated series stuff, right here. Here goes the animated series line, which is one fifth scale. There's the one fifth scale Batman Nightmare line. Here's the making of Doomsday, so very cool stuff. Here's the 3D render. See, I still gotta snag this swamp thing. So if you're you know, a fan of the DC Sideshow statues, this might be a book, a little coffee table book to pick up. All right, lastly, we have The Absolute Swamp Thing, Volume 2 by Alan Moore. Fan favorite book. Uh, I'm reading this. I'm about halfway through it. I'm loving it. This has a couple of differences from Volume 1. First of all, uh, DC Vertigo is now defunct and it's kind of everything that was published under Vertigo is now considered DC Black Label So it has the Black Label logo on the slipcase kind of doesn't have the Vertigo logo on the spine uh, This has a $100 cover price You have the same type of mossy felt material as you did with volume one And let's see what it collects here Saga of the Swamp Thing 35 through 38, uh, Swamp Thing 39 through 50, and that's it. So far, I haven't had any issues with the binding on this. I know Volume 1, some people had some issues, but man, beautiful oversized artwork. I know that there's been recoloring since the original versions and that, you know, a lot of purists are not really fans of that. Me, this is the first time reading this book. Like, like I said, I'm halfway through it. I'm loving the artwork. I'm loving the story. Um, I don't want to really talk too much about it because I'm going to do a separate video where I review this book But uh, as you can see the binding looks good. The pages are not coming unglued from the ribbon which was happening with some of the volume ones and um, Yeah, man, it's a beautiful looking book. Let's take an overhead shot of it All right guys, this might be the creme de la creme Swamp Thing by Alan Moore loving this man. I love the first volume this one I feel like it's even better because this one we get the introduction of Constantine, and man, they nailed the Constantine character right out the, right off the top, you know. Beautiful green hardcover. They utilize these pages so well. Like, look at this huge, oversized artwork. Uh, Stephen R. Bassetti, John Toldman. Artwork is great, man. Uh, this one plays with the idea of you know Swamp Thing learning his powers, learning more about what he is and how he's able to basically leave his body and teleport anywhere in the world and kind of gets put on these little missions by Constantine to, you know, with the promises of learning more about himself and what type of being that he is. Constantine comes out the gate. He knows all about him. He's like, oh, you're another... Uh, Earth deity or something like that. I don't think that's what he calls him, but something along those lines Huge covers I gotta tell you I mean I could understand not liking the recoloring but the colors are much more vibrant than those original colors man I don't mind a moder modernized take on colors. Let's see what we have in the back as far as extras looks like you have some script and some sketches A lot of great supernatural stories in here, man. Stuff, zombies, werewolves, you know, things like that. Underwater vampires. So, I don't want to give too much. I definitely uh, want to do a full review of this thing uh, when I'm finished, which should be shortly. 
All you have to do to enter the giveaway is be subscribed to the channel, leave a like on this video, and comment below. Once we hit 97,500 subscribers, we're going to pick a random video where I promoted this giveaway and draw a winner based on a YouTube random comment generator during one of our live streams. You'll be able to tell when the winner is drawn because the live stream will say the subscriber number and giveaway in the title. So make sure that you're subscribed, leave a like and a comment, and good luck. All right, guys, so that's the haul. Huge haul today, man. So shout out to Marvel Comics. Shout out to Boom Studios. We really appreciate you guys, you know, showing us some love. Make sure that you guys subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss me dropping reviews on any of these books. And appreciate you watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.